got something different here now. You know, we, we interview people every day here. And uh, uh, as you saw, of course, uh, Jack interviewed me. Now it's my turn to interview Jack. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Banana Jack Murphy. It's not even his real name. Uh, are we going to reveal that on the yes, show today? Yes, we are going to reveal Ooh, that today. Wow, that could so, be scary. So you're going to learn the truth about our own <laughs> really? uh, uh, Nanner Jack. Yeah. We'll do it at the end. No, let's do it now. No, uh, I don't want to do that now. Marvin. We're gonna well, break there it. it is. It's out there. Yeah, it's out there. I'm not going to wait. I mean, this, this is interesting stuff. How did you get the name Marvin? Uh, I was named after the doctor that delivered me. Uh, my mother had had some complications with her first pregnancy. In fact, I had twin sisters who who died. Really? Yeah. Sorry shortly about after that. birth, and mm. uh, was uh, and and my mom was told that she probably shouldn't have kids. Didn't say she wouldn't, but probably said she shouldn't have kids. And so, uh, when they found out that she was pregnant with me and it was going to be a boy, then obviously all the, you know, I come from like an old, old, old line families where you know birthright and carry on family names and so my name was already predetermined by great grandma and grandma and you know other members of the family and when i was born because uh my mother had a successful you know delivery she decided to just break ranks and said it's my baby and so she named me after the doctor who delivered me marvin pool was marvin. his name up in central north carolina I was so that's, right, say, where, where is this your hometown Let's uh D- johnston <clears throat> county is where i grew up but i was born in harnett county a little town called dunn oh little, yeah a little border county kind of like you know loris tabor city it was like dunn and benson they were six miles apart right on the county line so i was born in harnett county north carolina you're a good old uh, tar hill boy yeah i was a tar hill well what's going about your family i mean you came from a, a long line of uh, what's the last name blackman which is blackman. an english name yeah there you go um there were blackmans on the mayflower Mm-hmm. So I've been told, not my family, but uh, <laughs> we've been around a long time, Dick, because I went back on the farm that I live on. Well, my, not I live on, that I grew up on. Uh, the way it was divvied up, my my great grandparents had so many kids, and they had small road frontage but deep tracks. It was kind of right. bizarre how they did it. But that family plot of land, I, I trace back to 1842. And, and I'm, I kind of put it aside, my genealogy, but that same land in, the, in a member of my family's name since the 1840s, which so is kind of cool. You still have it, right? Yeah, still have it. <clears throat> Parts now, of it. What? Okay, now, now your, your daddy was uh, an entrepreneur, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of entrepreneurs in my family. Uh, I, I would probably say most of us couldn't spell it, but we, cer- <laughs> we certainly were entrepreneurs nonetheless. Um, they always had their own businesses, uh, not really, uh, and, and if they w- had what was called a job, it was usually working for another member of the family. It was, well, the reason I bring that up is because, you know, you own a radio station now when you got into yeah. radio. Um, I want to know how you got down to Myrtle Beach. I remember when you came, you know, remember you were supposed to replace me at WKCQ. Right. But I never got to see you. I was already in yeah, another you were, station. You, you were gone. Where, yeah. where, where, you went? You were you at the country station? I went to WYAK. Yeah, you were playing country music. Yeah, yeah. And then it was a year later that you uh, came into town. And and tell them about how how Hennessy put together a little to get you going here. How he rolled you into the scene. Well, when you were on uh, WKZQ, I, I believe it was three thousand watts. Uh, I think maybe we were, six, three or three or well, six. Well, it started out that I think we had already blossomed up to to the big dog just before I left. I think no, I hadn't. No, they had they because they had some complications. So they you had, had more watch the, than me, Jack. Oh, yeah, I did. They uh, purchased the the land wow. out around the Homewood section, put the tower up, right, and that's when they were going to almost fifty thousand watts. I'm appalled. Yeah, but 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 go ahead. And with so the, how and so when, with the in. frequency, you know, <laughs> staying the same and, and the power increase. Uh, they were going to change formats. Right. And right. Uh, I had been uh, working. Uh, I worked in Raleigh for uh, Jim Hebner, who owned the Tar Heel Sports Network. And I was an NC State fan. Uh, and so I was over there, you know, Tar Heels. It was nothing but Tar Heels. I got to work with Woody Durham as a young kid. Oh, wow. And uh, so I was up in Raleigh. And uh, then I uh, was unceremoniously released. You're not in radio until you get canned, and I, I was canned, and I was devastated. <laughs> and so I, I took a job with ASCAP. So I was uh, relocated to Savannah, Georgia, and I was a 
in the songwriting royalty collection business. And my territory covered everything from Hilton Head, South Carolina, all the way over to I-95, and that went straight down to the Florida border. So that was a lot of territory. So I was driving around, making sure people paid their ASCAP rights. And coming from a, a small business background and knowing what it takes to keep a business alive, I did follow the intent of songwriting and, and, and royalty collection, but I tried to help out my clients from a business perspective and say, look. And so there were some interesting stories there. I thought I was in love. Well, I was, but the girl that I thought I was in love with wasn't really in love with me. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, it was kind of a strange thing. I, I would leave early on Friday. I mean, I would really, <clears throat> we had like a quota to get in. And we collected a lot of time cash payments, so we had to go get money orders or buy cashier's checks and get this money to the home office in Atlanta. And I would always check out early because I was in love. Uh, and uh, this girl's father was the chief of staff for the governor. And I had met her when I lived in the capital city of Raleigh. And if you're a Mayberry fan, as I am, there's just something magical about Raleigh. Going oh, yeah. to Raleigh was magical. It was when I was a boy. And so I would tear up I-95 every Friday afternoon and get up there and spend the weekends in Raleigh and then come blistering back and try to time it where I could hit all my South Carolina clients and stuff early in the morning on Mondays. And so uh, I got to hear a lot of great radio. I was driving along that interstate, and I started missing it bad. I was jonesing for it bad. So I went back to North Carolina from Georgia and uh, landed a morning job. I was doing seven. I was doing mornings, and then they said, "No, we're going to bring in a new morning guy." So they moved me to seven to midnight, and then they gave me my morning show back, right? Uh, which was fun. It's and addictive. I, and I put together a demo tape. There was some buyouts and mergers taking place, and and I knew that pending an FCC approval of a sale, that I was going to be without a job. So I started sending out uh, tapes and resumes, and I had worked with John Van Pelt in Raleigh. And uh, he had worked at KZQ. It was, oh, a, yeah. it was an award-winning station. I mean, I, that's the first time I heard of the Freakin' Deacon was, was on what is called an air check, a recording. I said, oh, man, that's a cool station. I want to work there. And there was a kid named Rockin' Rick Hudson. I don't know. You might have worked with Rick there oh, yeah. before you left. Rick had interned because he grew up in Garner and Raleigh. He interned at 94Z, so he knew who I was, WZZU, the Hefner station. And he was doing nights at KZQ. And so uh, when they had gotten wind that, you know, they were looking for a new morning show, I was Marvelous Merv, man. That was my name. Well, <laughs> that was too close to Marvelous Marv, Marv Clark. Clark. That had, That's right. You know, had, and so uh, I had to come up with a, a different name. <laughs> and so uh, I met with Bill Hennessy. It was strange because I met Bill before the job interview. I came into town like way early and I'm at Mammy's Kitchen and I'm wearing a suit. And Hennessy liked the fact that I showed up wearing a suit. Wearing a suit, yeah. And uh, he'd already seen me. And so we even had talked to each other because I said good morning when I walked by and all of that. So I, he, he was already – I was I was getting points for an so, interview. So you knew him. You, I didn't know him. You didn't know I who he was. I just saw him. I was just nice to him. Oh, okay. Which – was is it was probably something new to Hennessy yeah. now that I got to know him and work with him. It's probably one of the, it's probably strange for someone to and come it, up to him and say, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" It, it, it probably yeah. probably freaked him out. Yeah, he's probably saying, "Who are you?" And so uh, and so a few few minutes later, after I had breakfast at Mammy's Kitchen, I drive down for my interview, and I was like, "Oh, wow!" And I won't tell you that how the conversation went in the meeting. It was <laughs> posed one of the most interesting questions I'd ever had in a job interview, but I got it, and I sat around in a hotel room. Um, for about five weeks, hmm. I was board hopping. You know, Easter weekend in Myrtle Beach and KZQ used to be huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And it was still huge when I came in 89. I board hopped. I mean, I wanted something to do. I, and uh, so we came up with this whole stage thing that I was coming from the islands when I was literally sitting in a room trying to lay low. But you came up with the, he, who came up with the name? Banana uh, Hennessy Jack. came up with Did the he? whole deal. He goes, I've got a morning team. He goes, I want banana and OJ in the morning. Right. And right. he goes, I need a banana something. you got to change your name. Well, I was like, well, what am I going to do? My mother's maiden name is Jackson. So I was part of the Jackson family, but not that Jackson family. <laughs> As Nelson Jackson yeah. reminded me time after time, I said, you know, I'm a Jackson. He goes, you're the wrong Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I was always called uh, Marvelous Merv, and then I had some people who just called me Murph. So I said, okay, we'll just kind of keep the initials in there. And Banana Marvin didn't work. 
and I just didn't like Banana Jim. <laughs> so uh, I figured we'd just go with uh, with B- Banana Jack Murphy. Yeah. And I knew I'd made the right decision because a movie came out with Charles Bronson mm-hmm. called Murphy's Law, and he was a cop named Jack Murphy. There you and go. And I was like going, okay, if Charles Bronson can be Jack Murphy, so That works. I. Yeah. And that was 89. And, uh, yeah. yeah was, I had a good run. I had left in 88, so when you came in 89, I thought you immediately replaced me there, but you didn't. No, it was no. a the, year later. Yeah, it was, all, it was almost, it was probably well over a year. That was the plan, right. but things just didn't work out. And from there, you've blossomed into a, an entrepreneur yourself yeah like i met a guy from huntington west virginia named ralph mcleod oh yeah i, I met ralph uh, through his his wife at the time i don't know if it's wife number one <laughs> uh, it, it's it's really difficult keeping up with, with, with mcleod but uh, his wife uh, worked in the advertising uh, pr side i believe with hudson belk remember belk i sure do yeah i think yeah. And, and so that's how i met ralph and we struck up you know uh, kind of a, a special relationship. He was a West Virginia boy. I'm I'm from North Carolina, kind of like Andy Griffith and Barney Fife, and so yeah. that's kind of like the deal here, North Carolina and West Virginia again. And it, it it worked out. We started doing Myrtle Beach Days, and I started doing some television stuff. Now I'd done TV. I did TV news in 1987, uh, kind of a small uh, cable. Uh, I remember news outfit back in '87. Yeah, I remember. We have. I remember seeing you doing these bits. Oh yeah, we did video uh, bits. It started out uh, this week at the beach. Yeah, and then we uh, took over and did Myrtle Beach Days, and it's kind of irreverent. We did things then. Well, I've actually made sure that none of that stuff that was so what I deemed controversial. I mean, you can't get away. America's changed. People take themselves way too seriously. Uh, this political correctness has run amok, and it's just really, really stupid. Because right. I'm a Bible thumper, and I just look at this stuff right. and say, this is totally outlandish what you can't do anymore. So there'll be no reruns of any of your stuff, Not I really. Guess. No, no. Well, I mean, it's not like it was nasty stuff. No, it wasn't. It but just, it, was, it, it was really every on the edge, extreme we just edge. Everybody is thin-skinned now. I yeah, did, right, I right. did a, a little stand-up comedy there for a while. Right. I, I wouldn't even dare attempt stand-up comedy now because... No. I did that one time and grossed out some uh, Shriners, and I quit. <laughs> you gross out a Shriner. <laughs> you better get out of the business. You must have been busting out the Gene oh, Tracy I out, yeah, I, well, all I that did, truck I, driver humor I, if you I embarrassed did. a Shriner. But, uh, anyway. So that's it. Yeah. You know, I met my wife, Barb, uh, in 1995. She was a guest on the show. She was working at the Oricultural Arts Council. I said, what is someone, they're going to come over here and they're going to beg for funding. I don't want any artist up in here on a rock and roll show. Morgan Patrick, the coach, booked her. The coach. Uh, Morgan's father was a college professor, and he was a little bit left of center from me. And uh, the wild thing about that is, is that uh, Barb had listened to the show, and when you hear someone's voice on the radio, you picture something entirely different. Oh, yeah. And so when she came in late by the way, which is something that still continues to this day. Uh, we're never on time for anything. Um, waiting on a woman. Brad Paisley had a great song about that. Um, we met, and uh, I told all the guys when she left, because I had three or four guys that hung out on my morning show, I said, hands off, fellas. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, that, that's my girl. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask to go out with her. Well, yeah. one of my buddies that was on the show tried to snake me. No. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he sent flowers over there. But, see, the flowers died. I sent a plant. And then about a week later, I went to see if the plant was still alive. I wanted to see if she took the time to water it and nurture it. And if that plant was still green, I thought I had a chance. Oh, yeah. So we got married. Apparently, I had a chance. And uh, we uh, we purchased a house uh, about a year after we got married. And a few years later, uh, we had a son. Tristan I just guess. celebrated his birthday yep sure did yeah. and uh the crazy thing is is that uh I w- he he I had turned 40 and he was born so I do everything late in life well I did too so yeah or even so I've only got the one kid so and, and plus now you own WLSC yeah we bought that in 07 right you know uh when right before night I had was uh scheduled to go to uh wave 104 uh before 9-11 and right. when 9-11 hit it kind of messed everything up and so uh, I replaced Howard Stern over at Wave. I stayed there till 07. And, you know, I have been at WLSC in Loris longer than I was on the air at KZQ. Is that wild? It's called an investment. Yeah. You've got money involved. Yeah, I did. I rolled the dice and uh, we put the FM on. Well, Jack, uh, in, uh, uh, buddy. Last year. 
and, and personally, I want to thank you for offering me, well, and Don, uh, the opportunity to, to be here with well, you. Well, it's not me. It was Donald. You. Well, it was, yeah, it was Donald. I'm sure you had a little something All right, to do so with. there's the Jack story in there 50 you go. minutes or less. There you go. Uh, that was the interview with Mr. Banana Jack Murphy. Now you know the, the real story. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>